The Bash Pro 8 shifter is unlike anything out there currently on the market, and the key element that makes it unique is it's the first shifter to feature an active gate locking function. In simple terms, it prevents the engagement of a shift if the clutch pedal hasn't been pressed, so essentially simulating the function of a real gearbox transmission. Once you delve deeper, you'll realise it performs this duty with a higher degree of sophistication than my basic explanation, and that will become clear throughout this review, including an option to simulate a dog box transmission. Also note, there is a sequential mode, though that's not advertised on the product page, but I will demonstrate that for you too. So I have a lot to show you today, guys, so sit back and enjoy. What you see is what you get, a sturdy metal enclosure with a 3D printed section hanging off one side, plus a large 3D printed box housing the electronics featuring carbon fiber panels. There are two sockets on the front panel. The top one is for the USB cable that runs to your PC for data and power. The lower socket is a six pin layout for extra optional button inputs. The manual covers this in detail, including information regarding connecting to a MAN TGX shifter knob used for truck simulations. The OLED display shows the current shifter mode and other information. We can rotate through the shifter modes by pressing the button. To attach the gear stick to the body of the shifter and correctly line up the gear knob label, you will need an M11 and M13 spanner. There's a cutout in the underside of the enclosure, giving us a window into the working parts of how the mechanism functions. There are two gear gates, a large one positioned over the top of a smaller one that appears to be in an offset position and obstructing the channels of the larger gear gate. If I attempt to engage a gear, it's blocked by the smaller gate. This is how the active lockout works. The smaller gate is a moving part controlled by a connected motor. And we can see this working. The active lockout is releasing and the gear stick is now able to fully locate into the channel. And when the gear stick is pulled out of the gear into the neutral position, the lockout gate resets. The lockout gate is also providing the mechanical resistance. As I push and pull through the gears, the fraction of a second where the gear lever is held up before fully engaging is the locking gate registering the action and releasing. When we get to the software setup, you'll see that the timings per gear gate can be adjusted. In sequential mode, the gate remains locked and the gear lever is restricted to the motion shown here. There is a tactile snap providing feedback. The gear stick is not held laterally, so it's still free to move left and right and centered by the spring. I'm not prepared to perform a full teardown here. Sorry about that, I'm just not brave enough to do that. This is an expensive piece of gear. That doesn't belong to me. But I did take off the top cover so we can peer inside. And what we do manage to see here is some wires and lots of chunky metal pieces held together by bolts. This looks like a component related to the locking mechanism, but I really can't work out how this works. Windows recognises the shifter as a basic button input device. There are six gear positions and these are registered as button inputs one through six. 
For the reverse gear, which is picked up as input seven, you send the gear lever into neutral, push the lever all the way left, and then into six gear. You need to perform this motion within one second to engage reverse. Sequential mode. Sequential mode is registered as inputs eight and nine, so they do not overlap the manual gear button inputs. So when you do map the Bash Pro in a game, there are no conflicts. MV8 Studios provides a video setup guide plus a PDF manual and you're free to look at those on their product page at any time. So I'm not going to run through a step-by-step -step guide today, but I will cover the essentials. The Bash Pro uses SimHub and a plugin that you need to install first. This means the Bash Pro should effectively work with all games that support SimHub. So if you were wondering if compatibility should be a concern, you needn't. It's fully covered. Under the hardware setup section, take note of the H-Sync delays per gear. The numbers are in milliseconds. The default settings are different to what I have adjusted here, so you may want to change those as soon as you get started. You can enter a number up to 500 milliseconds. The delay alters the timing of the lockout when you change gear. The main use of the training feature is if you intend to use the shifter in dog box mode. It isn't obligatory, but it is a process worth spending the time performing in at least your favourite cars to precisely map the gear ratios. Training started. It's a simple process of maxing out the RPM in each gear and lifting your foot off the throttle to get a reading, and this ensures the car and the Bash Pro are precisely synced for optimal performance. Gear 3. Also, training the shifter will learn if the car is using less than six gears and then be able to completely lock out those unused gear, gear positions. So it's useful to run through this procedure for that reason too. And this will be applied to both dog box and H-Sync shifting modes for the same car. Training complete.
Before we move on to the testing and evaluation, let's take a moment to observe the interaction between the active locking mechanism and the clutch pedal input. And it's very clear to see here, I can only engage the gear when the clutch is pressed. On track, this prevents the possibility of mistiming the gear action before the clutch pedal and demonstrates the advantage the Bash Pro has over any other sim racing shifter without this active feature. Before I say anything else, I should tell you the Bash Pro does work with games that aren't supported by SimHub. However, it will only operate like a standard USB shifter without the locking mechanism being affected by the position of the clutch. Without SimHub, the shifter runs in idle mode and that means I can engage shifts freely as I was able to demonstrate on my table earlier. The Bash Pro falls back to its built-in default timings to release the lock when pushing into a gear. I'm running Wreckfest right now it's a racing game that does not output telemetry data, therefore cannot communicate with SimHub, and that means the Bash Pro has nothing to work with. But as you can see here, it is running. Yes, ideally, the Bash Pro is best when used with games that communicate with SimHub, but it's not an absolute requirement to at least function in a basic way. H-Sync mode. Now let's move on to the good stuff where the Bash Pro is used to its fullest. In this instance, we're on track with Automobilista 2. I can tell you right off the bat, it works as advertised. If I don't press that clutch pedal down, that lockout gate prevents the shift. And when I use the clutch pedal correctly, I can move the lever into a gear position. And that's the case 100% of the time. I can't say I was gentle with the shifter, I was slamming through the gears with a fair deal of force. Since I wasn't able to show you an in-depth teardown, we don't know how that lockout does this job. But I can tell you, at no time was I able to overcome the locking mechanism. It held up to my abuse, it's clearly very strong. The Bash Pro is built for metal parts and this comes across in use. It feels robust and chunky, adding to its satisfying notchy and mechanical feedback. It really does feel like something is happening and you're interacting with a real gearbox transmission. The sensation is unlike any other manual sim shifter I've ever used. Since the tactile tension is controlled by the release timing of the lockout gate, you can't push into a gear any quicker than it allows. And as I already said, you simply can't overpower it. I showed you earlier in SimHub, you can address those timings. You can increase or reduce these on a per gear basis as you please. Even if you set the timings to zero milliseconds, that doesn't mean the shifts are fluid without any resistance. There's still a delay as the lever hits the gate and the lock releases. In comparison to my non-active basic shifter, like the Moser one here, you can observe I can fly through the shifts as quickly as I'm physically able to move the lever on that Moser shifter. On the Bash Pro, my speed is dictated by the mechanism. There were times under hard braking and downshifting into the low gears, I would have liked to be able to perform the action quicker than the Bash Pro allowed. When things are spicy on track, decelerating, heel and towing, and navigating a corner, at the same time with heavy traffic around you, stuff is happening quickly, and you really want to get both hands back on the wheel as quickly as possible. With the Bash Pro controlling this element, in some situations downshifting can seem sluggish, making things more challenging. Generally when I was shifting down into second and first and turning into tight corners is when I was observing this. That said, the speed of the transition between gears with the Bash Pro is closer to reality. This is like operating a real manual shifter. So on the measure of simulation, the Bash Pro is realistic, but it is something you need to factor in with this shifter and get used to. Dog box mode. Hopefully, you already have a basic knowledge of this form of manual transmission. In brief, it's changing gears without using the clutch by matching the RPM of the gear above or below. Being able to change gears without the clutch has an advantage of being faster, and for racing, where extracting every ounce of performance from the car is essential, this is very useful. 
Dog box shifting is a straightforward process. For upshifting, the RPM needs to be high within the range of the gear you're shifting up into. You lift your foot off the throttle, change up the gear, and then back on the throttle. For downshifting, the RPM obviously needs to be lower to match the gear you're dropping into. But instead of lifting off the throttle, you blip the throttle at the same time as you change the gear. If the racing game allows, there's nothing preventing you from shifting gears using this method with any other sim shifter without an active lockout like the Bash Pro. But for this type of shifting, it is a whole lot more intuitive with the Bash Pro as it does prevent miss shifts if you don't get the timings right by physically blocking the gear channel unless the requirements are met. I did find that upshifts are easier than downshifts using this method, and indeed there's nothing preventing you using the clutch in dog box mode if you're struggling too, so you can mix it up between the two if that helps. It's clever stuff and well implemented. During my testing, I was still getting used to the dog box type of shifting. It's a brand new experience to me. I haven't quite mastered it, but I was getting there. Sequential mode. tap on the mode button, locks the action and turns the Bash Pro into a sequential shifter. It comes with a decently solid tactile snap, the motion is quite short, moving only about 10 millimeters in either direction. Um, it feels like an average budget sequential shifter to be fair, nothing exciting or terrible, it's okay and perfectly serviceable. Although the lateral motion of the gear stick isn't locked, the spring holds it tight enough, I wasn't wiggling it side to side, so it's not a problem to worry about there. Um, obviously you're not buying the Bash Pro for this feature, but it is still good to have this as an extra built-in option, and having manual and sequential gearboxes in a single device is a space-saving convenience. I suppose if you have the spends to buy the Bash Pro, I dare say you won't have a problem shelling out on a dedicated sequential shifter either if you want something with a nicer feel. The maker has done a fantastic job building the hardware into a small form factor. It's no larger than a regular bog standard manual shifter, but it does so much more. This is an impressive feat of engineering. The symmetry is slightly spoilt by this piece on the side, but otherwise a tidy looking unit. Although I can't attest to the long-term reliability of the Bash Pro, it's clearly sturdy and built for durability. I was smacking it around on track and it didn't break a sweat, so I fully expect it'll keep on trucking for many years to come. Setting up the software is straightforward. The SimHub plugin gets the job done and in-game, it just works. There's really nothing complicated and not much more effort than setting up a regular manual shifter. You map the gear positions in the race game like you would with any shifter, and that's really it. And if you go through the process of training the shifter, you can get that done in 30 seconds. There are a few other bits and pieces you can select and tune in the software plugin, otherwise very quick to set up. I've had a great time over the past week with the Bash Pro. I feel very lucky to have had the opportunity to have a hands-on with this shifter. It's been a very interesting experience and I've enjoyed it immensely. It feels amazing and the active locking system works just great. Compared to other top tier sim racing shifters priced in a similar premium price bracket, the Bash Pro is technically on another level. It's the only one with this active function, making it unique. Now I've completed my review, I'm going to pack it up and return it back to MV8 Studios. I'm going to miss this one guys, so uh, yeah the Bash Pro has spoiled me. Every other manual shifter I've owned doesn't compare to this one. It is quite special. Would I like to own a Bash Pro? Yes, very much so. Can I afford one? Well, if I drove enough manual cars, I could see myself saving up and biting the bullet on that one. Um, but yeah, as it is, I wouldn't say I spend enough time in the sim rig seats with manual cars to quite justify it. But still, I would still love to own one. It's the ultimate immersive sim shifter. Um, and it sure does enhance the driving experience when it feels like you're using something as close to the real thing as this one. The connection you feel with the car is quite something to behold. The Bash Pro is very cool indeed. Unfortunately, if you do want one, there is a waiting list. So if you do have the money to make it rain for one of these awesome shifters, hit up the MVH Studios website. There's a link below the video and add your name to the waiting list to join the queue. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful. Do hit the like if you did. That simple click really does help the channel get exposure. So, you know, every little bit helps, guys. That support is very much appreciated. And also, thank you very much for watching. And until next time, happy simming and bye-bye.
Mm-hmm. <laughs>